This is Chaz McKenzie, and you're listening to the Pro Wrestling Enforcer podcast. I want to tell you guys, this is Sean Lennon with Pro Wrestling Enforcer podcast. And of course, uh, right now, we are welcoming Chaz McKenzie uh, back on Pro Wrestling Enforcer podcast. Uh, we had her originally on during StarCast weekend. Ooh. Yes, yes. In person, we got you at your mm. merch table. Oh, fun times. Over at, um, in Baltimore? Oh, Chicago, actually. Chicago, wow. Yeah, Gosh. I'm from Chicago. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Love Chicago. Definitely. Fun times. Thank you we for having me again, then. <laughs> yes. And so, of course, uh, you know, you need no introduction, you know, Australian women's wrestler, multiple championships around all over the globe, including Shimmer uh, Woman, the Heart of Shimmer title. And, of course, uh, we hope you'll update us on the experience during the pandemic and uh, see where your career is heading from here. Uh, Fortunate United States, uh, you had some you know, great events planned for us, and, of course, they were either postponed or canceled. So we'll talk about some of your favorite matches and wrestlers to work with and more. So everybody check it out, the Pro Wrestling Force Podcast on YouTube channel. Or you can like the Facebook page, uh, PWE Podcast on Facebook. So, Shaza, again, we welcome you on the show. Welcome back. And we hope everything is well with you. We know that, obviously, these are trying times for us all. But we really appreciate you taking time to be on. Of course. Always happy to have a chat and see what's happening in the world and everything. These, yeah, is these podcasts are a nice uh, distraction from the whole reality of life right now <laughs> that's true that's true I, i'm really glad that we were able to still do these things and and still have uh stuff to get our mind off of everything exactly um, yes so i mean uh first of all you know can you tell us about uh your trip to the united states i know it was unfortunately <laughs> when this everything started happening the virus outbreak and you know how did you cope with having to return home abruptly uh, you know, every every almost every event you were scheduled to be a part of was either postponed or canceled uh, due to the shelter in place. And I know that your first stop was it was it Chicago, I believe, was your first stop in the U.S. Yeah, so uh, my first stop in um, the U.S. was Chicago. My first show was supposed to be uh, Freelance Underground, right. um, and that show, like, I got in on the Thursday, and it was while I was in the air that. Uh, everything kind of happened because it's a very long flight uh, yes. from Australia to uh, Chicago. Um, and while, yeah, while I was in the air, everything sort of went down and um, Trump started putting in like the travel bans for Europe and stuff like that. Um, and then by the time I'd landed, like a couple of hours within landing, um, Freelance had been cancelled and well, Freelance Underground, sorry, had been cancelled and then like a few shows, later dates had kind of been cancelled or postponed or whatever. Um, so I was still kind of optimistic when I first got there because sure. um, it, at the time it was kind of like everyone just sort of stay inside for 14 days and then we'll see where things go. Um, but by the time I got there on a Thursday and by the time I – ended up getting another local show um, with Bo and Championship Wrestling on the Saturday. Uh, and then my Sunday booking with Bizarro and Lucho still went ahead. So I had those two shows. But by the time um, I'd finished at Bizarro, it kind of became very clear that, um, that like shows weren't going to, to pick back up. Like things were just kind of dropping off, getting cancelled, getting cancelled. Um, and it like it, I didn't want to pr- make the decision to go home um, prematurely. Like I didn't want to jump straight back on a plane and then get back to Australia and then in two weeks everything be fine and everyone kind of go back to normal and I've just flown back to Australia for no reason essentially, um, which was like my fear of like that I'd give up too soon and it wouldn't it, yeah and it would be a giant mistake and I'd miss all these things for no reason. Um, but as it turns out, I did make the right decision. Um, and I'm very glad that I did. I, I went home when I went home. Um, and yeah, just because like I went, I, fl- I flew home on the Tuesday. So like I did the Bizarro on uh, Sunday and then Monday I spent looking at flights and organizing flights. And then on the Tuesday I flew home. Um, so I was really only in the country uh, Thursday to Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> and then I was 
uh, all the way back to Australia. And then I had to uh, be isolated for 14 days um, because that was the law that Australia had um, implemented because most of Australia's cases have been from international um, arrivals rather than community transfer. So um, that's something that they've put in, in place to stop that. Definitely. Wow. So you had a whirlwind. I mean, probably the, probably your most busiest weekend ever. Yeah, it was it, it was literally. a lot. Wow. wow. I can only imagine. And yes, I did see you were advertising the Bourbon Championship Wrestling. And then, you know, obviously we, we, we lost out some, some great matches. I mean, probably the most anticipated uh, show of WrestleMania weekend for me personally was uh, Black Label Pro Threat Level Midnight. And your yeah. match. Uh, for the IWTV the Independent Wrestling Championship, like talk about how much that meant for you, and you know, are you positive? Are you uh, optimistic that we'll have you and Jake uh, mix it up later on? That match was, um, it's one of the, yeah, it's one of the biggest matches that I've wanted for months. Like mm. um, since I was over there last year, I think. Like when I was over there in April, April, May last year, I think it was kind of when I sort of decided that I that was someone that I wanted to work with. And then his stock has just risen so drastically um, in the last like six to 12 months. And he's done such a good job at marketing himself online and everything like that. And he's a fantastic wrestler as well. And I was really excited for the opportunity to uh, work with him. So, um, yeah, missing missing that show. Uh, Missing any Black Label show because I love working with Black Label Pro um, and especially missing uh, the final, the blow off to months and months of me and Warhorse taunting each other on the internet. Um, yeah, it's a bummer. But I'm, I'm sure we'll figure out a way of, you know, getting the, the spark back and figuring out a way of getting it to happen again, uh, whether it's next year or whenever. Who knows? But I... I very hopeful that we'll get back to that yeah for sure I, I feel it needs to happen uh <laughs> and then did you ever just see also they did a um uh, like a simulation of the of the sh of the entire event of course i did because i won yeah. yes. i won <laughs> that's what's important i will yes you did win <laughs> <laughs> And so I think that may, means that I'm now the independent champion. So I don't know. Maybe they can Fire FedEx me the belt. <laughs> well, it was Fire Pro Wrestling. It wasn't a game simulation. So I think they can work out something with that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> sure. And Chris, do you have anything? Yeah. We've seen you go through a little bit of a character evolution lately. You were hardcore Shazza McKenzie, now you're heartbreak horror. If you can get into detail, just a little detail on how that took place. Um, yeah, so the whole concept of that is that basically I'd spent, you know, 12 years of my life uh, really dedicating uh, – well, I mean, I probably haven't dedicated all the 12 years, but the last few years I've really gone really hard and dedicated my life to wrestling and sort of gone all in and put my whole heart into it. Uh, and the idea was that all I ever got from it was um, a broken heart. And so, and I wanted a character that portrayed that, which is very much um, a part of the wrestling journey. You come into wrestling and you're so eager and you're so excited and you think it's going to be this great thing. Um, and then you realize that there's all these horrible obstacles and it's really not that fun the whole way through. Um, and I wanted my characters to sort of uh, show that struggle and, uh, a way that I could express that in the ring. Uh, and I never really got a chance to truly explore it yet because I uh, only did those two shows in America and then yeah. uh, everything got shut down. But we'll we'll see. We'll we'll do more when everything comes back up. Um, yeah, the way it's looking, it might, looks like it's a heel turn, which is what a lot of people might think it would be. It would be a heel turn. But yeah, you were the one I, character, so it's... I would, yeah, I would, like, the idea of, uh, like, a heel and a face and, like, your character is always one and always or always the other, um, I think doesn't necessarily stand. I think, like, um, all characters, whatever they are, like, they have a way that they can be a heel and they have a way that they can be a face um, because in one, one sense, um, hardcore 
happy-go-lucky um, Shazza McKenzie is really inspiring because she's – and she, you know, you want to cheer for her because she's the underdog or whatever. But at one point, she's also very annoying because why is she always so happy and I hate her? Like, so – everyone's characters have the the ability to be both good and bad no matter what color gear you're wearing is my theory i think that the idea of if you're wearing black you must be a heel um doesn't really matter but i mean i'm i'm whatever anyone wants me to be whatever they want to boo or cheer me whatever it is nice 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 anything like to say sean well yeah also i was to talk about was that um the match you had also schedule a Mad Justice, which was going to happen before Mania Weekend, <sighs> AIW, and, like, talk about that, that one. Because I feel like Matt is trying to get himself out there more and more, and he's known for doing the big risk-taker moves, the big, uh, you know, splash off the balcony and stuff like that. But I feel like, you know, working with you would elevate him just as much as you would ele- you would be elevated by him. Uh, would uh, you agree? Because he's still yeah, kind of I a mean- newcomer. I I would say Matt is would that he would have elevated me more than the other way around. Okay. I I see I see him as an absolute superstar, um, and I was very excited for the mat the match. Um, not just because he likes to do crazy stuff, but like I I'm not often given the opportunity to. If this this trip was really a chance where I was given a lot of opportunities to have a lot of. Um, more intergender matches and uh, more ho- high profile matches gen- like across the board. Um, so that's why I was very excited for it. Like I had quite a few main events um, and stuff like that, where I was really going to be able to show what I could do. Uh, not that you can't really, sh- you can't show what you can do um, lower in the card. It's just that you have, um, you have a role to play in a certain part of the card and you're not there to, you know, steal the thunder from whoever or whatever like and when you're given the opportunity to have these bigger matches you get the that's when you get your chance to really shine um so I was very excited for that match and I um I honestly when like I first got told about it, I was like because I I just assumed when I took the um AIW booking that I was probably going to wrestle Alley Cat or something so when I found out that I was wrestling uh Matt I was uh, I was ecstatic because I was just so um so excited that people trusted me with like that position. Um, and I was really excited to show that I could uh, do it. Definitely. That would have been ama- amazing. And hopefully we'll get to see that one. Hopefully. Again, <laughs> yes. Yes. I think you were probably ready for anything. Cause you know, with bad justice, he flies off anything. Oh, <laughs> he, was <gonna> ju- <laughs> he was definitely going to jump off something onto me. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. He's insane. <laughs> sure. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I, I noticed that a lot of your 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 promotions that you work for when you come to the U.S. are in the Midwest. I don't know if you're familiar with the Midwest, but it's kind of like these uh, six states that are all crammed together. Uh, I have no Illinois. concept of American okay. geography. Uh, oh no, just <laughs> but just uh, just just like seeing all the promotions that you're known for, you're pretty much uh, based in the Midwest, unless you go out to the West Coast or Florida, from what I've seen. Uh, yeah, I usually try to base myself in like Philadelphia when I okay. when I'm traveling, um, because I really like training at the Shikara Wrestle Factory. I think nice. Mike Quackenbush is a genius. Um, so whenever I'm over there for like an extended period of time, I'll um, base myself in Philadelphia um, and then just sort of travel around for bookings. But I I do spend a lot of time flying into Chicago airports, so. Mm-hmm. I assume that's Midwest. So, I yeah, I do send every like second weekend when I'm there in Chicago because I also love Chicago. Um, sure. And I yeah, I don't know that they're they're my two my two favorite places are Chicago and um, Philadelphia. So uh, I don't yeah, know which I'm one's sure. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just sure off the top of my head, uh, Warrior Wrestling they would love to have you. I mean, they have a, a great women's uh, uh, division going on right now where Tessa Blanchard is a champion. I could see you yeah. there. And then yeah, also- they just had that that crazy like eight woman um, uh, match thing that I I remember seeing it. <laughs> War of attrition. Yes, that's it. Yeah, that would be awesome to, to see you come there. And Chris, do you have anything? Yeah, I was gonna say we were going around the topic of how Matt Justice does a high flying moves and everything. <laughs> he is a very interesting take on the stunner. Which yes. allows you to use the rope. How did you come up with that? 
Because it's a very interesting way that you do that. Um, so the like, so I started using the split stunner, uh, just like in the middle of the ring, because um, I was just trying to find for ages. Like I knew I could do the splits, and that was kind of the thing that I could do that no one else at the time in Australia really could do, um, especially on the female side. So I was like, this is there's something here. And then eventually through brainstorming, I figured out that I could just do like a stunner. Um, and then the first time I did like the stunner off the second rope, um, like off the ropes in the corner was, uh, it was in a match with, uh, Jesse McKay, Jessica McKay, Jesse McKay, not Jessica McKay, uh, Jesse McKay, aka Billy Kay. Um, and it would have been back in like 2013. And I think we just, we were having, it was like a blow off to a, a big thing. And we were like, how can we make this bigger? Um, and then we got the idea of doing it off the ropes. Um, and then I kind of, for a while, I like, um, I sort of didn't do it very often. One, because I was like, I don't know how long my my hips are going to be able to handle jumping from this height into the splits. Um, and two, like, just so people didn't get accustomed to it. So it's still got a reaction and everything. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then uh, gradually over time, um, when I got put in more, I don't know, bigger matches and I, I saved, I save it for my bigger matches, um, still, uh, because I don't want to break my hips. Um, so, um, yeah. but yeah, like that's basically, uh, how that all sort of came about. And then, um, yeah. And I just sort of roll with it. And cause when, the first time anyone sees it, they kind of go, what? And then I go, ah, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. And I was at Shimmer Weekend, uh, 2019. I saw, I was like, I've never seen anyone use it this way. And the way that you are describing it is perfect. It protects the move, and it also protects you from not injuring yourself. Yeah, exactly. And, luck, like, I've never injured myself doing it, knock on wood. Um, but, you know, as I get older, jumping from a high um, elevation, elevation into the splits is probably not great. <laughs> Probably not going to be too detrimental on your health. <laughs> yes. And then uh, anything like to say, Sean? Oh yeah, Shaza. So we saw you featured on the AEW Dark last fall, and so talk about that experience, and you know why AEW is somewhere I'm, I'm sure you'd like to be. And and once everything is over, you feel like you might figure into their plans somehow. Um, I love AEW. Like I've been team AEW since before they even announced AEW like um I remember meeting uh Brandy and Cody when they came down to Australia in uh November 2018 um and just being like these are the people that I want to work with and they hadn't even announced AEW uh at the time and I sort of uh I'd like I'd followed the whole story like I like the whole journey of um everything like um, the Bullet Club and everything that happened in New Japan with the Bucks and Kenny and stuff like that really invigorated my passion for wrestling and like um, the Cody and Kenny feud. Like I went to Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, because I had to see the, like I was as much of a fan of that story as I was um, a wrestler. Like I finished wrestling um, at like oh, for Sh I think I had Shimmer that afternoon, WrestleMania weekend. And I got like straight from Shimmer, I went to Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, because I needed to see that match. Um, even though, like, And it was a fantastic match, so I'm very glad that I got to see it. Um, but, yeah, so, like, AEW and, like, that, the people that work for AEW is something that I've always sort of supported and been very passionate about. Um, and I was very lucky that I got to be a part of the Casino Battle Royale back in August last year and then um, – the dark taping, well, d dynamite taping slash went to dark in um, November. Um, and it's just a matter of, I get, like, I, I, don't, I don't think the door's closed. I don't know if the door's open. I, don't, I have no idea. Um, all I can do in this business is uh, just do my best and hope for the best. For sure. And we, we definitely hope to see you back in the U.S. So if that was – present you the opportunity that you could work for them and still, you know, do your other bookings that that probably be, you know, icy on the cake. Yes. <laughs> you know, especially if they would be able to take care of like the accommodations for travel and whatnot. Yeah. A hundred, well, a hundred, like 
at the end of the day, my goal would always be to live in America full time. Mm -hmm. Um, but that just, yeah, it's not as easy as it is said than done. Easier said than done. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Oh, I know. And moving anywhere is, is, is definitely more difficult. Like if I want yes. to move to the suburbs or another state, even the U S yes. it, it, it's just uh, so much complications, especially now more than ever. Yes. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think there'll be much of a chance of, um, international travel from Australia, I think, uh, for the remainder of this year, as mm -hmm. far as our government's co sort of concerned, uh, they're pretty, um, they're pretty, uh, I don't know what the word, they're pretty determined, I think, to keep the borders shut until at least the end of the year um, to try and stop the spread of the virus and can contain it so that we can get back to living our lives here, at least in the meantime, and then we'll see what happens. Oh, it's totally understandable. And my next question was like, Australia was hit hard with the beginning of the year with the natural uh, causes, the fires, you know, and displacements yeah. of thousands. Like, uh, you know, talk about, you know, you know, going on and surviving that and still had been determined to come to the U.S. Uh, for your yeah. Friends. The fire, th this uh, bushfire season was like, we have a bushfire season every year. Like it's like, it's, um, it's unfortunate, but it is sort of a way of life that we sort of accept. But this bushfire season was just, it was beyond anything anyone had ever seen. Like the amount of fires and how long it went on from, like it started in November um, and I don't think they got them um, out. The, the last fire didn't go out until sometime in February. Um, and when it went out, it went out because uh, we then got uh torrential rain and every, everything flooded so we went from one natural disaster to the other um but it was it was like crazy even in the the city areas you couldn't breathe when you were outside and because there was just so many fires everywhere it was um like we all had we've been we've been wearing masks since last year in, in Australia because we couldn't breathe during the bushfires and now we have to wear them for different reasons um but yeah it, it's just been a bit crazy I think uh, I'm very uh, happy and proud of my government with how they've handled um, the pandemic and uh, everything like that and I think we're, we've got a good approach and uh, we might be able to get back to life at some point which is the which is the goal I guess some sort of normality um, so we'll just see how it goes it's just we just take one giant disaster at a time and then see where the world goes Definitely. I think we're all, you know, we're all dealing with this, this process. It's, you know, it's very hard. Like, you know, we always have like all these things on our mind that, you know, all these dates and I'm sure you do, cause you know, this is your job to be, make all these appearances and all these, these uh, wrestling events. And so, you know, we all have these dates in mind. We just have to pause and stop them. And it's so difficult. Yeah. I think like the fact that it's um, such a widespread thing and, so many people are affected I think slightly has made it easier to sort of cope with because it's not like things were taken away from me it was something was taken away from everyone in the world and we're all going through this together like it's such a um communal thing that it's yeah like you just have to be strong for everyone so that we can all get on with life definitely I agree and Chris you have anything to write in our mood yeah yeah, I think I do, actually. <laughs> Talking about your uh, character and everything, recently there's been a couple female wrestlers like Kylie Ray and whatnot that have been mocking your in-ring hand gimmick, that sh that you've mocked Kylie Ray's hand gimmick. Was that a sign of a possible challenge in the near future, or was that just something off of fun? Um, Kylie, and uh, so... Um... Me and Kylie did a match uh, back in, uh, I want to say, June last year. Um, it was like a week after Double or Nothing. Um, and we did a whole match based on um, us having very similar poses. Um, I mean, the whole match wasn't, like, based on that. But there, it was that was kind of the story that we, we told, that I was, like, grumpy that she'd taken my pose and blah, 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 like, um, because that was just what we decided to go with. Um I the the pose like I don't I don't care who does the pose it's I'm just always just 
making fun and joking um, because it, there was that, that one week in, I think it was like WrestleMania where everyone was doing some <laughs> variation of the pose and I was like, ah, come on, guys. This is too yeah, much. Yeah, but, but, like, but like, I don't actually care. Like, you, no one owns a hand single symbol or like whatever. Like, it's wrestling. It's not it's not real, guys. It's fine. Yeah. Unless you're an absolute bad man and they want to copyright it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I saw Alexa Bliss do it. I'm like, oh, that, that, you know, that looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so next question I want to say is, you know, on that topic is the WB, you know, released so many uh, people. And so I know it's heartbreaking, but like when you see the men or women, you know, some of them that you know and you're familiar with, uh, you're looking forward to competing against. I mean, uh, and also, you know, in Shimmer, we have a lot of new uh, talent that arrived in the past uh, year or two. So anybody that stands out from both of those. Or if I am so excited that Diona is back um, on the independents uh, because she's fantastic and she's been one of my dream matches uh, for I don't know since for for a few years like we had a, we had like a triple threat um, one time when she was down in um, Australia in 2018 I think we had a triple threat with Indy Hartwell um, shout out to Indy Hartwell she made a raw debut this year, week we're very proud of her um, but yeah like um, that's that's the one I've never had a singles with and I just think that it would be it would be good and I that's who I I want to wrestle. Oh, we'd love to see it. If only we could have Shimmer Weekend come back this fall and, and bring you and Deanna mm-hmm. there and somehow have a match or, you know, something, you know, leading in, into that. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be that would be amazing. We'll see. Sure. And, and I know that Cody's interested probably in her. And then Marty Skrull is, is her, her uh, I, I believe they're still in a relationship, so he would probably offer her ROH. But, you know, we'll see, obviously. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Present, what presents themselves. Yeah, that'd be amazing. And uh, any any of the guys that you would like to wrestle, like off the top of, the, of your head? Oh my gosh, um, Chris Hero. Yeah. <laughs> like I would die, but it would be a good death. It would be death like by elbow. Death. <laughs> yeah, like like I'd be dead, but <laughs> it'd be okay. I'd be happy. I'd be dead. <laughs> oh my goodness. You can only imagine. Yeah, Chris Hero is <laughs> legit. As they come, that'd be awesome. And I think he, he was been, the last trainee of Mitsuhara Masawa. Yeah. What was that? So he was the last trainee of Mitsuharo Masawa. That's why yeah. he's got a wicked elbow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, that'd be amazing to see, see see any of those matches happen. And you know, I obviously feel for them. You know, being part of that 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 organization. But, uh, you know, letting them go at this time is, is horrible. But, you know, hopefully they'll get a chance to, to show their worth and prove their mettle, right? Yeah. Hey, Chris, do you have anything? I think I'm – I don't know if I have any more left. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a little late here. Well, I have one final question for you, uh, Shaza. We, we appreciate you being on. You've been a wonderful. Um, what, what the last question was – Women's wrestling has always been something that's, you know, not willing to conform to what's popular. You know, before the current support, you know, like back in like, you know, like the early 2000s, uh, you know, what drove you to continue training and performing and seeing that, you know, there wasn't a lot of interest in what the women were doing at the time? Uh, Well, when I first started uh, training, I never really thought I was going to be a wrestler because, like, I just didn't think that that's what I would be able to do like I like because of I guess how women were presented um and stuff uh like I watched a lot of independent wrestling but I was thought oh I'm not not as tough as those girls uh, but like I just yeah I didn't really know what I was going to do and then I sort of sort of got through training and I was like oh this is like I want to wrestle like I enjoy doing this part like <laughs> I thought I wanted to be like a manager or something I didn't think I'd I'd ever be able to do the physical side of stuff um because I'm not an athlete or anything uh, by nature. Uh, but, yeah, it, I just, I just it's more of like a competition with yourself and I guess like if you have um, peers around you that have the same goal. Like I was very lucky when I started um, 
in the same like six months there was like uh jesse mckay uh like billy Kay and uh casey cassidy aka peyton royce and kelly skater we had um eliza sway we had all these girls that started in like the same time um and it was sort of like the first generation of girls in australia that wanted to be wrestlers um and i guess we all sort of just kind of kept pushing each other and pushing for it ourselves um to a point now that there's like i don't know 20 or 30 female wrestlers in australia there's there's so many more female wrestlers in australia now than there ever ever was uh when i first started and it's so cool to see yeah definitely and then of course madison eagle was a huge part of that i'm sure well yeah exactly madison was our trainer and our motivator and um she really pushed us to uh not take anyone's crap and just to keep going definitely and uh, dave prezak he, he had mentioned on like this recent um i forget what it was it was like a shimmer rise like a you know a chat uh in mm-hmm. live live chat he said that you know madison you know if, if this is what where women's wrestling was at like 10 years ago madison eagles would have been featured on nxt or wwe oh 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah it's yeah, just sure. it's sad it kind of passed her by at, at her prime yeah I, I i think she's still very happy with everything that she's been able to accomplish like we all know, we all know that she's the best uh that there there ever was and 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 we make sure she knows and i know she's very much enjoying uh her role in wrestling now for sure and we, uh, we wish her the best and wish you the best shaza we appreciate you taking time to be on Pro Wrestling Enforcer podcast, and hopefully we'll see you back in action soon. Uh, if you, there's anything you'd like to plug, go ahead. Uh, all your uh, social media all my social medias, uh, at Shazza underscore McKenzie. And then all my merch links are usually there. <laughs> okay, great, great. You got Patreon shirts and, and whatnot, right? Yeah, Patreon, Big Cartel, Pro Wrestling Tees, Wrestler Merch. I've got it all. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> And everybody, you know, please show your support. These are trying times for great independent wrestlers, you know, like Shaza among them. And, uh, you know, please show your support and uh, check it out. And Shaza, we appreciate you again being on Pro Wrestling and Forza Podcast. All right.